What is up guys? It is Joe. I'm back. We're talking about the portal again. In back-to-back -back videos, we're talking about visits from players from Michigan. We're going to talk about it here and more before I do get into things here. Let me tell you this. If you like K-State Athletics, if you like K-State Basketball, K-State Football, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It does help me out immensely. And I appreciate each and every one of you taking the time to comment, watch the videos, leave support. It does mean a lot and it does help me out so i appreciate each and every one of you doing that also something quick to mention i am going to be giving away a lavender quarter zip once we hit 2,000 subs on the channel we're getting closer every day so once we hit that i will post a video talking about the details so be sure and be on the lookout for that but guys let's start talking about what's going on in manhattan if you didn't see it terrace reed was on a visit in manhattan this weekend with the staff went to a baseball game i think his dad was with him as well and it sounded like there's some good things that came of that i don't have anything beyond that to say at the moment but we do have this dimension that wasn't the only visit. Starting on Easter Sunday, K-State had another Michigan man visit Manhattan. Doug McDaniel, a name that we've talked about on the channel in the past, but this time more definitive. Doug McDaniel took a visit to Kansas State, got there Sunday night, I believe. And I'm not sure how long he's in town for. I'm not sure what the plans are yet, but he is checking out campus as we speak. I've talked about McDaniel in the past in a video, but let me kind of run through my thoughts on this and what the addition would mean for K-State. Now, first things first. If we want to have the dude conversation, if we want to have the splash conversation of is this guy a certain XYZ type player, this dude is absolutely an incredible land in the portal. This would be a massive one, a huge recruiting win, and you get a guy that is already a dude. I mean, he's a dude. He is what it is. He's also just a sophomore, which is awesome. So you have more time with him as long as he doesn't go NBA or transfer portal, whatever happens. You know, you can't take anything for granted, but he does have the ability to stay in Manhattan for a couple of years. He's a five foot eleven sophomore guard. This past season at Michigan, he averaged 16.3 points, 4.7 assists per game, and 3.7 rebounds. Another thing people might love to hear, he's a good shooter from three. He shot 36.8 from three this season, and he fits your scheme perfect. He is your pure point guard. He's a shot creating guy. He can do anything you ask of him anywhere in the country. Like, He's already got some interest from TCU. He did stop in at TCU for a visit before K-State, but it's already speaking volumes concerning the fact that he made the trip to K-State. Last year you saw with Ernest Duda Jr. Ended up talking about K-State's a place to go. Uh, I think there's another school involved. And then TCU. Didn't ever get past the first weekend. Went to TCU, fell in love, stayed at TCU. So that stuff happens a lot. It means a massive deal that he came to K-State. Especially on Easter Sunday. Like I talked to a couple of buddies of mine about that. And kind of asked, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's an awesome thing. Because hear me out, you get the coaching staff that is already so family-oriented and you already know uh, what Jerome Tang means from a spiritual standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, but what's really cool is you go to church in the morning, obviously you're taking care of whatever you're taking care of, Doug gets there, odds are you're probably having a big team and family get-together that kind of shows you know everybody that's in town and you kind of get a feel for the team, get a feel for the identity of what you're looking for. So I would expect that to be a good thing. I wouldn't say that the it's a weird date to travel or anything like that. I think it speaks volumes that he still made it to Manhattan on Easter Sunday, right after another visit to TCU. So something to mention there. Let me talk specifics. Coming out of high school in the class of 2022, the kid was listed as a four-star prospect. He was the 87th ranked player in his class, the 15th ranked point guard in the class, and the fifth ranked player in the state of Virginia. As a transfer, because this is something we talked about with Terrace Reed, he currently is listed, and these things update on a daily basis, so if by the time you're seeing this it's different, that's not on me. He's currently listed as the 17th ranked player in the entire transfer portal and the third ranked point guard in his class. Now on three, I think has him at the top as like the 12th best player in the portal, the 11th best player in the portal. All these things are subjective, but to see a top 20 player in the portal visiting Manhattan, back to back with Terrace Reed and now with Doug McDaniel, the staff is cooking. That's the immediate thing to take away here. Could it be a good thing and a bad thing that his former teammate just visited? Yeah, sure. I mean, they're very different positions, so don't you know try to think of it that way. But it can be a great thing to have someone you're familiar with go and you know check out a place. It can also be something where I'm like, nah, I'm trying to get away from that. I don't really want to carry that over. I don't think it really means anything right now. Outside of the fact that if you land both Reed and McDaniel, you've got a ton of experience working together as is. Like, you have to fit a new team together every single season, but having two guys that have experience playing together in the same offensive set that's a great thing. And both are dogs, man. Both are dudes. Both are whatever adjective you want to use to describe them. They're both great players. Another thing that people have mentioned, there is some academic issues, I believe, at Michigan that kept him out for a couple of games. He had a short suspension, I believe. I don't anticipate that being a problem. The Big Ten's an academic league. They're very, you know, I mean, nerdy is the best way to say it. The Big Ten's kind of demanding about the academic stuff. Not saying that K-State isn't, not saying that the Big 12 isn't, but I don't anticipate that being an issue. I think you kind of work out the kinks uh, as that process happens, if you're a college athlete, especially one of McDaniel's caliber, I don't think that'll be an issue going forward. 
Some good news for K-State fans, and I don't personally subscribe, but I've got buddies that do. Uh, Trilly Donovan did mention in his Discord, if you don't know Trilly, he's a kind of a burner, kind of an insider guy that somehow knows everything about everything in the portal. He did mention that K-State is currently in the lead for Doug McDaniel's services, so that is something to look for. He's also the same guy that tried to push Tang to Louisville like four different times, so there's that caveat. So it's a good thing, it's a bad thing, whatever the case it is. But as far as McDaniel's game goes, he is the perfect player that you need. The biggest thing that he had that nobody on our team last year had was the ability to hit mid-range shots from floaters. Like, taking the lane, getting off the dribble, especially in the five-out offense, and then you couldn't you couldn't really have anybody that was able to put up the floater. Tyler Perry at times could, but it didn't seem to work out. His shot would get rejected, or he just didn't have enough experience, so some of them would rim out. That wasn't really something you had. When I talk about Doug McDaniel's float game, it is elite. Elite float game, something that K-State could use. The kid's got Marquise Noel-level range. You know, he can shoot from the logo if he feels like it. He can... Really do whatever you need him to. He's a great passer. Another thing you like to see is he's got experience both, uh, you know, being an ISO. He's got experience on the pick and roll. And he's been successful just about anywhere they've put him. So he's a really, really multifaceted guy. And I think he'd work really, really well in tandem with Data Ames, with David Castillo, with whoever you toss out of that two guard. You know, you don't know if bringing people in or not is going to kick guys off the team. Not kick guys off the team, but make them enter the portal or not. So there's always that argument to be had. But... Doug McDaniel is the player you need. Let's be honest about this. This is the player you need. He's the leader you need. He's a young guy, but it doesn't feel like, you know, it doesn't feel like the same recruitment that some of these are. Doug McDaniel steps onto campus. He's immediately a major piece of your team. That's a national championship type point guard that could lead your team there with the right team on the court. So something to watch for. I know it's not a, it's never set in stone in these things. You know, recruitments can mean one thing. Visits can mean one thing, but K-State notoriously hasn't been great about like, once you have a guy on campus, you don't see a quick turnaround on the commitment most cases. At least, uh, you know, in the past transfer portal, and I know I'm judging that based off of one or two summers, but you don't really see guys visit, and then on Sunday night they're posting that they're committed. You don't really see that. So maybe that's a coaching staff thing of being like, hey, take your time, you know, let us know what you think, but I would assume that both Terrace Reed and Doug McDaniel are going to have quick decisions to make. That being said, there's a ton of people in on them. You know, NIL can come out of nowhere and be like, eh, you know, here's an extra $2 million like that. So this stuff can all happen. K-State has the resources to get it done, but it's now beyond the question of just getting him to Manhattan because that's always the first jump and the first hurdle that you have to go through with certain guys. He's in Manhattan, treat him, you know, treat him the right way, give him the Manhattan experience, let him go to a baseball game if the schedule you know, allows it, whatever the case is. And I think there's some good things that could happen there. So you end up getting Doug McDaniel. I think that's immediately a guy that everybody should be stoked about. I mean, you get a top 20 kid there. You get a top 25 there with Terrace Reed. Those are two massive additions for your first two roster spots. So nothing set in stone, but I just wanted to make this video talking about how Doug McDaniel is as a player, how he fits in with Manhattan, how he fits in at K-State. I'm over the moon for it. And you should be too. I mean, the guy is an athlete. He's a ball player. He's a great Jerome Tang type guard. That's the best way to say it. But guys, I'm probably going to get out of here now. I just wanted to talk a little bit about my thoughts regarding Doug McDaniel, the visit in Manhattan. This will probably be my last video out of town, potentially, I suppose. But um, I should be getting back to the studio here pretty soon. So I appreciate each and every one of you guys supporting. Fingers crossed we get Doug McDaniel. So do whatever you can. Pledge whatever NIL money you can do. Whatever you can do to help out uh, in recruiting, in putting K-State up another notch, whether it's commenting a GIF of Jerome Tank, showing the love from Manhattan. Everybody go out there and do it. So it's something you can do. Challenge yourself. Challenge your friends. Because this dude is legit. And I would love to have him in Manhattan. I will talk to you guys here soon. Go Cat.